Right, um, today's quite a momentous day. Not that I'm very much told I overthink stuff, but we're going to finally attempt to put the diesel eater in. But the thought of cutting a hole that big in the floor, yeah, doesn't fill me with any level of confidence, but hey, here goes. Right, Sandy wants heat, so heat she shall have. And to allow us to do that, I have purchased the Max Peeding Rods unit that comes with loads of elements and bits and pieces which I'll go through. And your next bit is like, well, where do you put it? So I'm thinking that I want to put it there. Which means I'll cut this out back to there. And then I'll build an 80-20 frame over the top. And then have the heating coming out at a right angle here. The good thing, the bit that I like, is that when I roll this back, the fuel tank is here. So the distance between the fuel tank and the heater, well that's 500 mil, it's not gonna be a straight line. So let's say maybe 750 mil, which is relatively short, which means Things like priming and that should be better and the install should be simpler which will help me so let's get it kicked off let's take this unit off all very straightforward That's that one, let's put that over there. And one screw. Two screws. three screws and that lifts out and lo and behold we have the fuel tank now I've, I've had a look on YouTube and it seems the easiest way is to take the feed and drill a hole through here the breather pipe so that's what I'm going to do Of course, I have cleaned this to make sure I don't get any crap going into the fuel tank because that wouldn't be good. I guess if we did break down, at least we'd be warm, but then again, we might not be. Well, it's not great. Well, maybe I can uh, clean that up. And I've got a hoover. We are free, and that needs a good clean because I don't want any of that to go down. So let's clean that up.
Okay, not too bad. So I've got my feed, so I'm now going to put in. And take it from there. Give it a good wipe as well. And from that point, what have we got? Three hundred and forty. Now I've also got to take into account that as well because that will go in and it will sit on top of that. So that's 340. That is 30. So that's now 370 to the bottom. But I don't want to go to the bottom. I want, because <laughs> I don't want to drain the diesel have a nice warm van in the morning and unable to start so we need to cut it off I believe it's about 30 mil up from the bottom but I'll check that so I need to measure 330 millimeters got a marker myself being cack handed ah. and I believe I need to cut it at 45 degrees so that's what I'm going to do been filed, cleaned and blown through to make sure there's no bits there, but that's it. So let's see what that's like. Then that will be sitting above there, which will be fine. Where's my cloth? So I want it so if we are going to use the diesel litre, we'll top it up with fuel, make sure it's full of fuel. But at the same time, it won't empty it out. So, next stage, I need to drill a hole in here, right through there. So, that's the next stage. I've been told not to use the white fuel cable because that disintegrates over time or degrades so I have bought some green so I'm doing as I'm told so next stage is to Tight. Okay. So this will fit over there. in easier 
Okay, let's start drilling. One, and that's a three mil, just so I've got the right area. And I'll bring it up to four. I mean, I could go to six, but hey, you know, let's try and do it properly. So I only want to do this once. Okay, that's quite, I can seal that, that's no problem, but that's the right. So now we can put that back in place over the key, make sure it's set down, and then that should now go into there like that so that's quite neat so I'm gonna seal that with a bit of CT1 because I don't envisage it coming out um, and we'll put it all back together okay and there you can see it's in place a little bit of CT1 to seal it and the rubber connection to make it tight so i guess that's what you would call phase one thank you very much now in my defense it really hasn't been the weather to lay on the floor to get underneath the van but what we will try and do Let's rearrange everything so we can make sure that everything is sorted and make sure that if it does rain I can carry on working so hopefully that'll work
There you go, hopefully, that'd be cool, that's the stones are just as a precaution, so that means I can get underneath and we will draw the awning out from Freddy just to in case it rains, which, you know, it might, so, here it goes. put the fuel feed in, the pipe is there and over here we have an electrical feed which is ready to go. So all I've got to do, and I've not been overthinking this at all, is take that hole and make it larger. Joy. Okay. Hmm. Slightly worrying, and they probably think I'm dead. But actually, I'm just on my trolley. But nonetheless, all that is back. I'm not dead, Roy. See how I've drilled the hole before I drill the big one. So, without further ado, let's give it a go. And yes, I've had a nervous poo, alright? Thank you. Have a hole. It's got a big hole. So, got a bit of a problem because um, we're trying to feed both the fuel fuel line and the supply for the pump without drilling a hole well another one anyway so this is my issue so we've got this hole here it's all been painted up and then we've got you can see the feed for the pipe we've managed to pull through but what I want to do is feed this one as well but of course it's got this dirty great big plug on which you want to use because it plugs in nicely and holds everything in place but it won't get through the gap 
So what I'm going to have to do is cut it and reattach it underneath. I think that's the plan. So here goes. And the wires are now cut. Right. Wire. Pipe. Taped together. Go. All taped together. Now we go under the van. Okay. Let's pull it through. And there we have it. Chickity boom. Oh yeah. Okay. As you can see, the exhaust is now mounted. That's the only hole that I have drilled. The rest, I've used offcuts of my 8020. I stuck it to the chassis via CT1, and that gives me two options. It gives me some flexibility on how to mount stuff. And I've also used a piece of 8020 to mount the filter and the pump, because they both need to be accessible and they needed to be adjusted and I've also taken the opportunity to put the air filter at the end as well. We haven't finished because we now need to cover and protect the diesel heater. So we've got some 8020 there, these are all off cuts, piece in the middle to make it nice and strong a piece over there as well and then we'll build it up from there diddly do
So, never knowingly under-engineered is the test. So, me thinks that's strong enough. This will come forward, so that will be covered all the way up to there. If we come back and look down, we've got a way of opening to putting stuff in. And then just so that it looks nicely finished, go good little hole in there so we're going to sort that out but otherwise it's pretty much done so what's the word oh yeah tickety boo thanks for watching